Okay, so uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's sorry. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here. So I'll be a little bit anxious in the beginning. <laughs> okay, very well. So today I'm going to tell you something about pressure waves as another logical step in the tire manufacturing process. We believe it has a very nice future in front of us because you will see a lot of benefits that it can actually bring. But uh, I will start uh, with the reason why actually microwaves are so effective in the production process of uh, tires, rubber and uh, things like that. It is because of something that we call thermal conduction. As we all know, rubber in general is a very bad heat conductor. When you heat it from the surface, it takes like forever before the heat gets to the core. Uh, so here I have some examples of heat conduction, for example polystyrene of course is used for insulation, so you can see that it has just 0 0.033 watt per meter Kelvin, rubber just below that, and you can see that copper is even a few orders of magnitude uh, somewhere else, 372 watts per meter Kelvin. Uh, I need to say what uh, heat is, so we can understand the further process of microwaves. So in lay layman's terms, heat is rapid vibration of molecules. Uh, when you heat something, the molecules start uh, vibrating rapidly, and uh, we call it that it's hot or warm. Uh, if we want uh, to have an effective uh, production process at the beginning uh, where the rubber mixture is being made, we need to introduce uh, the rubber bales, uh, natural or synthetic, inside the bamboo or some other kind of mixer. Uh, because in cold areas, uh, the rubber might be crystallized and uh, it's uh, very thick and there are some problems with that, it has to be conditioned before that. Usually there are some conventional ways used for that. It's uh, hot rooms or large temperate storage areas. Both of these methods have uh, high losses and it takes a long time. We'll see in the next uh, few things. So, the advantages of conditioning are mixing times are reduced, less strain on the machinery, lower power consumption and higher quality of rubber mixture, also stable input parameters. This is something very important because with microwaves you can actually always have the same input temperature. It doesn't matter if it's minus 40 outside or plus 30, you can still have the same input temperature which results uh, in a very nice continuous process and you have the same quality at all times. Uh, these are some figures that I actually got uh, from a rubber supplier, so maybe they are different uh, for some of you because I know that uh, some of our clients actually have some different values. So it is said that at least uh, 30 degrees Celsius has, be, has to be reached uh, to make sure that uh, there is no crystallization of uh, the natural rubber. Uh, when we are using the hot room, it can take a lot of time. Uh, these are the data that I took from the supplier. From our own experience, we know that, uh, for example, to preheat uh, the whole pallet, it takes uh, three days and more to make sure that even in the middle it is heated to the desired temperature and that it can be introduced to the mixer. Uh, if we use only a storage area, then it can take even months. This means that uh, the flexibility is very bad and in case uh, you need to make any changes in the production process then you have to use cold rubber and you, you might have some issues with the mixture that it's not mixed properly and so on. So everyone knows uh, microwave from their home use. Uh, if anyone wants to read uh, the full definition, it's here. But again, in layman's term, what we do is with microwaves they penetrate the material and with the frequency they change the alignment of the molecules when they are polar and then thanks to the friction, friction we actually generate heat. This heat is exactly the same heat as if it was heated by conventional means but it's not from surface, it's from the inside because as we said in the beginning, heat is the vibration of the molecules. So, there are a lot of myths and uh, some ideas about microwave heating, so I'm gonna uh, talk about some of them. For example, a lot of people think that actually it's only water that's heated by microwaves. That's not true. Microwaves heat uh, polar molecules most of the times. There are some exceptions like Teflon, for example. But uh, if the molecules are polar, it can be heated. Rubber can be actually heated very well by microwaves. 
Also, I already said that the heat is the same. Some people are afraid that microwaves are ionizing or that they change the DNA structure or the cellular structure of the material. Actually, they don't. If you heat water, if you heat food, it's the same food and there is no difference as if it was heated by conventional means. It's the same heat at, at all times, so there is no problem with that. Some people are asking me, for example, when I show you later how we preheat the large rubber bales, if uh, the quality is changed. No, it's not. A lot of people are afraid of metals in the microwaves. Of course, if you don't know how, then it might be a problem. But when you know what you want uh, to achieve with the metals, actually stainless steel works as a mirror for microwaves. So that's why microwaves are usually made from stainless steel from inside. Aluminium is not a problem, so when we use pallets inside the microwave, we use stainless steel or aluminium. And even iron can be used if you know what you want to achieve. We have an application when we have uh, some iron duct inside, which gets heated and it also generates some heat for the material. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of the leakage from the microwaves. Uh, the leakage is actually lower from the mobile phones. And if someone is afraid that uh, it might leak, we can put a detector on the wall with a central stop and there is no problem with that if uh, anything happens. For example, if a person with a forklift uh, breaks the hull of the microwave. So, some basic information, there are two main frequencies, in reality there are three, but the third one isn't used, it's over 5 GHz. So, the 2450 MHz is the home microwave. 915 is uh, an industrial frequency, but it's used mainly in the United States. Here in Europe it can be used, but uh, you must make sure it doesn't interfere with uh, the mobile phones and so on, which is very difficult. What we usually talk about, and is very important when heating with microwaves, is the microwave penetration depth. It depends on the dielectric properties of the material, how well the electrons and uh, molecules react. Then used frequency, because the home microwave, the wave has around uh, 12 centimeters, so the penetration doesn't go too deep. The industrial frequency has around 30 centimeters, but as I said, it's used mainly in the United States. Here are some examples of the penetration. For water, uh, it goes just 1.4 to 6 centimeters. It's really very small, so heating water doesn't make much sense if it was in larger quantities. But wood and rubber is something completely different. Having 60 to 120 centimeters for rubber actually means that we can heat the whole pallet with the frequency of the whole microwave. So, uh, a lot of people think that microwaves actually consume a lot of energy. On one hand, it's true. On the other hand, because microwaves have 65% effectivity, which, when, which in many cases is a very nice effectivity, and uh, also they heat the material in a very short time, then we can save the energy because there are very little losses. So, in the tire industry, the use of microwaves actually makes it possible for the energy consumption to be lower than when using hot rooms and so on. Uh, the power consumption can, can be as low as 25 kilowatts per ton when heating by 40 degrees in 30 minutes. We were able to actually uh, reach even 22 kilowatt hours, but that was under ideal conditions. So here is how I was saying about the losses. Also, we are not heating the air, we are heating uh, directly the material. So these are some uh, microwave solutions uh, by Romeo. This device, for example, is made for preheating two pallets at once with the rubber bales, either with natural rubber or synthetic rubber, which means that uh, you save uh, time, you save energy, because the power consumption is better than in the hot rooms. And also, uh, I know that uh, in some uh, facilities, they actually dismantle the pallet and they put uh, the single rubber bales inside to make sure that there is airflow and that they get heated faster. With this device, it's not necessary. Only thing that you need is uh, to have uh, a machine to turn the original pallet and put it on a stainless steel pallet, and then you can put it in this device. In 30 minutes, you can get 30, 40, 50 degrees, exactly as you like. So, we have some uh, data. Can I just ask how many minutes I have left? How many minutes I have left? Uh, it's 10 minutes, okay, very well. 
Well, uh, so the output temperature usually depends uh, on the requirements of the client. Some people prefer only 30 degrees, some people want to get higher. Every degree counts. It uh, makes the process better later. But uh, when you have it too high, during winter you will have a large power consumption because you have to go from temperatures below zero. So our current client usually uses around 40 degrees Celsius as uh, the best compromise. The temperature can be even uh, below zero, minus 20, minus 30. It doesn't ma matter for the microwaves in this case because they are able to uh, make the molecules vibrate even from these temperatures. So the lower the temperature, the more effective actually microwaves will be when compared to the conventional heating methods. Uh, the process can last from 30 to 60 minutes. The 60 minutes I just threw because when we go from really low temperatures, of course, it takes longer because the power is given of the device. The device that you saw, this one, it has uh, two and a half tons, 2,500 kilograms, can be put in one batch, it's two pallets. The homogeneity is plus minus five across the whole pallet, in the middle, on the sides, everywhere. Actually, with microwaves, the core is warmer than the surface because the surface is cooled by the surrounding air. The core is uh, insulated by the surrounding rubber, so it stays warmer. Here is again the power consumption. The daily output of that device is around 80 tons uh, of preheated natural or synthetic rubber. In this case, uh, you can have perfect flexibility. Our clients use it as a continuous process. You don't have to have uh, tempered storage areas. It doesn't matter if you keep uh, the rubber outside. Anytime you need it, you just put it through the device and you have nice and warm rubber to be used in the mixer. Yeah, so this is the very important thing again. When you use microwaves, anytime during the year, you can have the exactly same input temperature of the raw materials which makes it very easy to control the quality. Uh, this is a graph just to show how much is it faster. If the graph was uh, larger, then you see that the whole process is so short. So it's here. But uh, I don't think this graph is so important. If anyone wants to see it at the end, I'll write uh, the stem number so you can give us a visit. Okay, so that was the preheating of raw materials. The raw materials technology is uh, finished and we know that it's perfectly working. So right now uh, it's already been placed in some manufacturing plants and uh, we are looking for new potential clients. In case of uh, preheating of green, green tires, this is still an experimental technology because there are some issues with that. But actually it can be really interesting because we already found some companies for which it is working and probably this year we will make a prototype. The idea of preheating green tires before they are put inside the curing press is not new. The reason to do that is because the first uh, few minutes or around an hour even, the curing press is not doing what it's designed for. It's not curing, it's preheating. And we don't want it to be preheating, we want it to be curing. And uh, when the press is so expensive, it definitely makes sense. So the conventional heating methods weren't effective to do that outside of the press. It takes a lot of time, the tire might get damaged, it might fall down, and uh, so on. Also, the energy consumption wasn't okay. So we developed a way how to preheat them with microwaves. When the green tires are preheated with microwaves, it's actually a very fast process. A tire of 350 kilograms can be preheated in 15 to 20 minutes to 80 degrees, let's say. Uh, concerning the temperature, it really depends because uh, each uh, manufacturer has different manufacturing process, uh, different rubber mixtures and so on. Unfortunately, I cannot say that this will work for everyone. We found some companies that cannot use the technology. The process is very fast and uh, the increase in production can be very significant without acquiring new, new curing presses, which can be interesting for people that have no more space to buy more presses, not to mention a uh, curing press uh, starts, at least I was told, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, it's everywhere, it starts at uh, one million dollars. Microwave is actually a little bit cheaper and it can service more presses at once, so you can increase the throughput uh, of your current presses with much lower price. So here are some data. Uh, the output temperature can be from 60 to 100, sometimes even more degrees. It depends uh, on the material. 
because there are some issues, I will be talking about them in the next slide. So the preheating time can start from 3 minutes, it's really fast. If you have a smaller tire, you can preheat it in 3 minutes. Uh, I am talking mainly about OTR tires. The passenger tires, they are already cured in such a short time that it doesn't make sense because we would lose a lot of time with handling. But the larger the tire, the higher the benefits actually we have. Okay, so this is again a graph. You can see it at the stand if you like. There are some how much time we can shorten and uh, how much faster it actually is when compared to the conventional means. Yes, as I was saying, there are some issues with preheating the green tires. We are working on them. Unfortunately, some of them probably uh, will not be overcome because of the physical properties and uh, so on. So, some tires are better for preheating than others. For example, we have the experience that if uh, the rubber thread is extruded as a whole, then it can be preheated much better than if it's many thin layers uh, winded on each other. Uh, sometimes there can be problems with bubbles as uh, some uh, chemicals, uh, water vapor and so on is escaping from the rubber mixture. In the press there is no problem with that, there is high pressure. But when we preheat it outside of the press, bubbles can start forming and uh, if they are large then the tire cannot be, the press wind will not uh, repair this thing. Uh, again, a lot of people are asking uh, about uh, the beads, the cords and so on. The beads uh, don't have to be a problem. In many cases there is no problem with that. In uh, some cases, unfortunately, a high intensity field uh, appears between the beads and uh, it, can it can really overheat the rubber and uh, it can degrade it. But it's only, some, um, it's only for some manufacturers, so it has, everything has to be tested. Also, the side walls uh, can get overheated, but again, it depends. For some manufacturers, they have to be covered. For some, it's not necessary. So, these are the frequent concerns when it comes to microwaves, uh, the metals, cords and beads. Usually it's not a problem, even the cords, because they're stainless steel, and stainless steel works as a mirror for microwaves, which means it's not heated, so the rubber would be degraded or it would be damaged, but uh, it means that uh, a small space next uh, to the stainless steel is not heated. But that's not a problem in the really large tires, because uh, then the rest of the heat is actually heated by conduction. <coughs> so this is the same thing when we have a really large tire, of course the penetration depth can be lower than the tire, but it will still be much faster than if you heat it by conventional means. You heat the first, uh, let's say 10-15 centimeters of the thread, and the rest will be heated by conduction or convection. Homogeneity. Uh, a lot of people are afraid that it won't be homogeneous. There are many ways to do that in a microwave. The first is the design. We have uh, the, the microwave is designed in such a way that the field can be controlled and that the microwaves are emitted directly inside the material. Then we have uh, special positioning of the magnetrons, not to mention the software that makes sure that uh, each magnetron is on only when it's needed. We also have some dynamic uh, temperature measurements and so on. So we are able to get the same homogeneity as with the raw materials, which means plus minus 5 degrees Celsius across the whole um, tire. Again, microwave leakage. Uh, if anyone is afraid of that, we have uh, sensors that can be placed around the microwave, which shuts it down if anything happens. We can also build a net around the microwave, which also makes it possible that the microwaves stay inside this cage. Risk of fire, a uh, very big issue, that's why we have uh, sophisticated fire protection systems inside to make sure nothing happens. The risk of fire is not that high, but uh, because you never know if uh, in the natural rubber or somewhere someone doesn't forget a nail, a piece of knife or stuff like that, because unfortunately since uh, it's brought uh, from Malaysia and the people or not Malaysia, I mean the people that made the rubber, the workers, they don't usually care. So a lot of things can be left inside. So I hope I have some time for questions. Okay, if you don't have any questions now, I'll be very happy to meet you at our stand, uh, 7.016.
can see, you will find it definitely. And we can discuss if anything is interesting for you. Thank 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 you.